The orcs are the very pinnacle of creation. For them, the great struggle is won. They have evolved a society which knows no stress or angst. Who are we to judge them? The Eldar who have failed or the humans on the road to ruin in their turn? And why? Because we sought answers to questions that an orc wouldn't even bother to ask. We see a culture that is strong and despise it as crude. Eldar Philosopher Uthan the Perverse Millennium 41 In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. Judas Blood and Teeth is a game using the Warhammer 40k trademark following a bad moon's wall that is raiding the planet Luteus for its fuel. Rogueside, previously labeled Crazy Monkey Studios, is a Belgium-based game studio that made Guns Gore and Cannoli. Guns Gore and Cannoli is a two-dimensional shoot-em-up fast-paced action game that was universally praised for its hand-drawn graphics and Roaring Twenties art style. The game left fans craving for more, with the second game coming out with an even better audience reception than the first game, with more included humor and gore. In early 2021, it was announced that there was a wave of Warhammer 40 games that were going to come out, including Chaos Gate, Demon Hunters, and Dark Tide, along with Shooter's Blood and Teeth. Shooter's Blood and Teeth is a pseudo-sequel of Guns Gore and Cannoli, with a lot of gameplay being improved upon from the second game. Shooter's Blood and Teeth uses a very similar gameplay loop to Guns, Gore, and Cannoli, using multiple different weapons and grenades to get rid of enemies of Dawa. Shooter's Blood and Teeth came out with a public beta earlier this year in 2022, and showcased the first two missions as well as the Slugger, Shooter, and Boomstick, with other features included in the main game not being added. The game has four unique classes that are the Flash Git, the Shootiest Orc, who has the passive ability to have a chance to not consume ammo and uses a Molotov cocktail called a Burna Bomb as his special grenade. The Storm Boy, the jumpiest orc, who has a larger dash and lights enemies that you pass through on fire. He also has a melee override that makes it so his melees explode when he hits something. His grenade is a cluster bomb that spawns smaller grenades on impact. The Weird Boy, the weirdest orc, whose melee stuns on hit and a bomb that stuns in a radius on impact. And the Beast Snaga Boy, the most savage orc, who has a melee override that sends a throwable spear that explodes after a short duration, and it pierces through enemies and hits the floor, wall, or ceiling. Also a squig bomb that attacks enemies and explodes enemies as it dies for its grenade. The classes from worst to best are the Beast Snaga Boy, my least favorite character because I expected more out of them. Their spears really should have been able to stick on enemies instead of walls. Also, they don't detonate on impact, and instead take a second to explode. But it destroys shields on bosses, so it's alright. Their squig bomb is my personal favorite grenade, though, and is awesome at splitting up aggro. The weird boy was okay. Not the best, not the worst. I did not expect to like their minimal kit, with their only real perk being on-demand stuns. Stuns? are important for bigger enemies that you'll run into later on in the game. The Storm Boy is universally applicable, and might be a speedrunner's go-to orc. Long range dashes allow you to run away from fights you don't need to take, and help you dodge attacks. His melee override is okay, and his grenade is plain good because of it being a cluster bomb. A short explanation would be to explain what's wrong with the Flash Gate. The Flash Gate is the best. Their passive is great for clearing enemies, fighting bosses, or bursting larger enemies down. Their Molotov destroys smaller enemies and can cook some of the tank bosses. Also, who would have guessed a class in a game all about Daka that has Daka related buff is the best? Who would have guessed? Wow, who would have guessed? After picking the class, you're brought into the story of Gargaz, a flash git of Wa Gut Rekka that has his hair squig unrightfully and unjustly snatched away from him. As he's kicked off of a Daka jet, he plummets towards the ground of Ludius. Swearing revenge on Gut Rekka, screaming, 
But before he claims his revenge, he's got to get out of this. I mean, I'd be pissed off if I got my wig snatched, too. Crash Landing is a tutorial stage that teaches you the basics of how to move, shoot, and walk. For a movement, you can double jump or dodge, never both at the same time. To wall is to enter a state of temporary invulnerability after doing enough damage, also making it so you fire a bullet hose out of whatever gun you have in your hands. Guardsmen, Gothworts, and Grots are your enemy. All of them have similar behavior, running up to you with knives or sticking back and shooting you with sluggers, shooters, or las guns. Just aim for headshots and stay at a safe range when fighting. You can continually fire at... Man, Wong's beautiful when you get down to it. The game teaches you that it is just your catch-all, I want something to die button, or I don't want to get hurt button. You start off with the slugger. This starting pistol is used for early rounds to farm points. I, I'm sorry. I mean, it's a good accurate headshot machine with a 12 round magazine, but is outclassed by the shooter which has a large magazine of 25 bullets that is amazing at clearing waves in front of you. You're also introduced to the concept of teeth. Crates of teeth are put around missions and can used to buy weapon alternatives or hats. They can be bought at the mech shop, which is unlocked after the end of crash landing. There is one area where you have to spin a valve, and one where you just have to kill all people in an area in a kill them all area. This one is easily done even on the hardest difficulties. My favorite variation of the slug is the zap gun because of its stun ability and its ability to insta-kill bosses in wall mode in the first patch of the game. And my favorite variation of the shooter is the one you start off with because it's just all around good. With the first level done, you hop over piles of scrap into the goth settlement. Goth Settlement is a sweetheart, because it gives you a free boomstick at the start, which is my personal favorite variation of the shotgun in this game, and it gets its time to shine in the first kill them all section. It can hold six shells and can do this to mobs of enemies. Mamma Mia. That is beautiful. In this arena, just stand in the middle and sweep from left to right. There's another valve that needs to be cranked right after that, and a door that needs to be opened with a lever, sending electricity slowly down through a blue spark. In the section with the blue spark, you usually want to stay on top of everything, and or go into the small shack at the bottom of the arena to not get turned into mincemeat. Going into the tall shack, there is yet another valve, but there is an orc throwing grenades that is protecting it. There are multiple enemies in the game that throw grenades, and you basically deal with them the same way. You do that by dodging their grenade and trying to get rid of them fast so they don't deal big damage to you, because they deal large damage with those grenades. Crank that valve and hop past the head of a stomper that, that totally won't be Chekhov's gun. Go to the left where there's some teeth, then head down to the right and step into an orc concert. The music swells as orc metal is blasting your ears for the first time, you feel like the biggest and baddest hit, dodging flame geysers and defeating a boss knob. It's much larger than you and claiming his warband. Gargan has been proven as the biggest and the baddest and mounts an assault on the Imperium Hive city of Luteus. But first he's gotta get through the wall imperturbable. Seriously? Imperturbable? That just means that the wall can't be upset. I guess impenetrable was too common of a word. The start of this one's actually pretty cool. And you get your boys to storm the trenches like it's World War I. Coincidentally, just like World War I, the shotgun clears trenches. You have to watch out for some mortar fire and mines. But besides that, when you finally get to the trenches, you can start taking out turrets and ripping them off of their supports to shoot them yourself. In a small bunker, there's a valve that needs to be cranked to go forward, with guardsmen filing in behind you. Just press the wall button once and you'll be fine. With the boys inside celebrating, meet you to face a new enemy. A Commissar, with a small bolt pistol and personal shielding. Treat this boo boo bear like an elite from Halo and just use your energy pistol with a charge up that destroys shields. Then barrel stuff that, sweetie. Oh boy, another valve that needs cranked with an elevator with a- A ROCKET LAUNCHER?! Zog, I needed this. What if there's a tank in the other room that's ready to turn me into a pile of blasted git? Oh, Cork! That's a Lehman Russ. With 150 
millimeter thick armor with las guns that only shoot forward with a rotating minigun on the barrel. Oh wait, it doesn't move that much. And can be easily dodged. Yeah, grow up. Next up, the Manufactorum. The Manufactorum Exultia is one level that should be forbidden, because its ability to be trivialized by a speedrunner or speed freak is crazy. Also, there are Rattling Gunners with snipers that use a red laser to charge up and instantly hit you if you don't move out of the way. They also get folded like an omelet if you hit them with the shooter twice. Run through this one, a speedrunner's delight. Oh yeah, there's also Ogrens that are tanks that move and hit slowly with large health pools that can be taken out with a good singled out wad to kill. They can also be stunned, so they aren't that bad. Now we have the first boss of the game. Fuck you, Freelance. This video is gonna be half a goddamn hour long. Now you face the Bastion of Valor. For a while, this one stumped me on my first playthrough. Death after death piled up until I found some things out, like the tank charging and showering boxes down on you. Also, rocket launcher missiles don't destroy stained glass windows and instead blow you up. First phase is easy once you understand it, the second phase is a bit more difficult, because you enter bullet hell, with your eyes having to dart back and forth. While the Commissar charges his tank, he peeks his head out and that's when you deal real damage. Once the Bastion of Valor is done, it's time to get down and dirty in the Locus Imperius. The Sewers, the jump scare capital of Luteus. Rats on wheelchairs with dynamite and tentacles, oh boy! There are two ways to play this mission, incredibly fast or incredibly so. Thank Gork and Mork you get the Scorcha. The classic flamethrower is all you need. Crowd stun and damage? For free? Against melee only rats and alligators? That you kill by not getting close to them? Oh my goodness gracious, what a surprise! The main issue of this entire mission is the raft on a poison acidic river. This section killed me multiple times. But you can just skip it by jumping and spamming dodge until you're out of there. There's also some weird Gene Sealer apostles that pop up slowly that act like guardsmen with purple dealies on them with red eyes. You can fight the normal looking ones like their guardsmen reskins though. There's one kill them all sections against some Gene Stealer apostles and rats. There's also a Gene Stealer boss fight at the end of it, which is pretty easy. Gene Stealer is a melee only thing, and as long as you hold out your boomstick and spray into them, there's nothing to worry about. They also have the ability to crawl in and out of air ducts to pop out and surprise you. This works against the Gene Stealer because it gives you time to reload. And this is a very easy thing to kill. Next level, the Oil Refinery. I love lighting barrels of crude oil on fire! I love lighting open pits of flammable liquid on fire! Yeah! More apostles and some more tyranid looking fellas shoot you and throw grenades. And some of them act like Ogren. A lot more wahing is in order to kill them though. With the amount of nids there are, I'm feeling like the mystical tree right now. Cause a workplace accident and turn a valve after breaking through a window. Watch out for flame geysers while you're on a conveyor belt with a kill them all section afterwards. You can just sit at the top of this arena and jump whenever the force field gun using apostles try to shoot you, jumping over the projectile. And after the section is done, you can jump down and look at the ungodly amount of heal squigs that Gork and Mork have blessed you with. In another room, there is a, another valve you need to crank, more flame geysers and crushers on more conveyor belts, and after you get through them, you go deeper down into the refinery. Fall down on an OSHA violation into another kill them all section, where you hit them with a the devious counterclockwise tech. Open up an entrance into Gruntilda's lair and travel deeper with another kill them all section with lots of flammable barrels, even more room to dodge bullets with larger tyranids trying to attack you. 
After that, you fight one of the more confusing fights in the same arena, with a brittle biophages and two larger tyranids fighting you. The biophages throws poison at you and goes down pretty fast. Then you can just wall the two bigger tyranids. Into the next room, you're gonna find Big Papa. Hey, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't really know much about Tyranids on tabletop or anything. Can you guys tell me what models you are? Okay, never mind. The Patriarch is a bastard of a boss. Having a shield he created with his big brain, you can also regenerate this shield if you don't do enough damage to his health during damage phase. As always, the best option is to just barrel stuff him with your shooter. You also have to watch out for his brain attacks. I have no idea how to get rid of them. So you just have to kite while something big and beautiful is running at you. They act like a larger gene stealer by ducking in and out of combat three times and letting you fight mobs. And they have a final stage where they send three seeking brain blasts out at you. His boss was alright, but I'm glad I killed him. In the Cult Uprising, the refinery starts exploding after the death of the Patriarch. Tyranids and Gene Stealer alike try to evacuate as you too try to skedaddle. This is a reasonably fast mission for speed freaks to get through. There's only one kill them all section with three Gene Stealers to fight, with two of them being in a gank fight. With fighting the Gene Stealers, you shoot a wall of barrels and blow a hole into the Hive City with Apostles and Tyranids running into the Hive City of Luteus. For being the boon of the Emperor, this place kinda sucks. You get to go through a domicile of civilians and guardsmen. It's all made out of concrete with skull shower heads. There's a variation of Oberyn with a shield blocking its front with a shotgun. Get above it and shoot its head or stun it with the Weird Boy's abilities or the Zap gun. In the first Kill Them All segment, the Workers Union of Rattling Gunners come out to protest about the one orc single-handedly killing everybody. I did their commissar a favor by quickly publicly executing them. Climbing through buildings, room by room, operating elevators, or backtracking to open up doors to the next area. This level is just rad with the world building and layout. After going through the level, you fight a sentinel walker as well as waves of guardsmen. Use your rocket launcher for the best way to chunk the walker, and switch to your shooter for walling, making short work of it. Working our way up, we now fight through the ever fancy Castellum Luteus. I like the juxtaposition of this level and the previous level, really showing you the high ranking military buildings compared to those of normal guardsmen. You even start facing intimidating Tempestus Scions. Who are only ranged and are like guardsmen but better with better tracking and guns that burn you. They also lead their shots, like bastards. And if it isn't bad enough, at the first part of the level, you get a kill them all section while also having to fight White Scars, Beakies. They're here for little old us, and they aren't even on assault bikes or land speeders. Which is kind of weird. I wish I was fighting them and they were trying to chop me down with chainswords on bikes. But they are walking fridges, taking entire WA charges to chop them down like Ogren. As long as you respect their personal space and try to dodge boulder shots, you should be fine. A lot of this mission can be run through by hiding like a cowardly kid and cranking valves. But with Space Marines showing up, the game starts getting a bit hairy. Everything starts shooting a bit truer. Space Marines with bolters and chainswords start to chunk you. Many fights have you getting ganked during them. And every heal squig you find is a bit more cherished than the last. There's also a Commissar on the toilet that you kill. Besides the toilet being awesomely made and the servo skull serving up fresh wipes it is funny, there's no sink. Meaning that Commissar you barged in on probably has stinky fingies. 
heading up to the top of the Hive City involves a fight between a White Scar's chaplain and two Space Marines with supporting fire from Ratlings. If you get rid of the Ratlings and train around the Space Marines like they're zombies on Round 20 under Reese, you should be able to kill them in two walls with your boomstick. Working our way up the Hive City, we go into the Void Port. This is the elevator ride level. There are two sections that can be easily done by running to the end of the segment, either killing everyone, then cranking a valve, or just running until you get to the end of the level. The true Wumpus starts on the elevator up. This is a gauntlet that feels straight out of Gravemind from Halo 2. With minimal heal squigs and waves of Tempestus, Guardsmen, and Space Marines flooding from every side. When you think it's over, a baby carrier. Intimidating in look, but not in play. They are simple to fight, and fight like a large ogre. Just dodge attack back and forth while spamming your wall. Then go up and over and don't fight anything to get to the end of the level. Gargaz is on his way to meet Lord Horik. A boss fight against an Imperial Knight. One amazingly presented boss with a large health bar and shield. You need to get rid of the shield three times before you kill him, and watch out for some of his laser and missile attacks. Unfortunately for Lord Horik, the zap gun exists. Silly Billy versus the unmatched power of the sun. Let's go. My name is Silly Billy. Taking a White Scar spaceship, you crash headfirst into the Gog Hammer. The Gog Hammer is Agra capital ship. This mission reintroduces the boss knob as a ranged and melee variant that are used as heavy units like Ogren. Start off running past Daka jets and using a valve to open a door to space. Many small arenas on the way, with the next big set piece being your art going outside into space to shut off multiple energy rays that act like a more annoying version of flame geysers. Gork and Mork, I hate these things. I have died of them more than anything else in this game. But this is the final batch of levels, so Rosai gets to mess with you a little bit. If turning valves wasn't your favorite thing, it's your new job now. Boss knobs are frequent, with grots and orcs alike. Especially in the missions, kill them all, drop in. Playing this level multiple times really allows you to be a speed freak. With the ship slowly falling apart, you ascend to the second part of the Grog Hammer. Grog Hammer Part 2 is a good final mission. Everything is working against you. The hordes of orcs, the electric rays, and zero gravity. The first actual room you fight in is great for grinding out achievements because of the never ending waves of grots. Run past them and crank yet another valve, going into a garage with only two small Gretchen in it. Oh Zog, that's a Killican! A Killican is a bit scary because it has a horrifying missile attack, but can be dodged by staying on the ground and dodging towards the Killican. They can also be shot out of the sky with a gun, but that's not as cool. Up a stack of crates and down an elevator is a boss fight with two Killicans. Wow. Do the same thing twice and make sure to get rid of those missiles somehow or you're dead. It's a good upping of the ante. Too bad we never see the Killicans again. As an enemy anyways. This treasure room up next perplexes me. Although it's a pretty simple horseshoe design with an exit at the bottom with slightly difficult enemies. But it has very interesting background art. In the background we see some of the treasures of the Wog Gut Rekka like Necron Armor, Eldar Weapons, Black Templars, and Black Legion Helmets, as well as the Armor of a Custodes? Along with a picture in the middle that I can only assume is Gargaz. This might be his personal trophy room. I mean, he has taken out Space Marines and an Imperial Knight single-handedly. I mean, 
Gargas is probably just goaded with the sauce. You then go into a squid room where there are rots that swarm you and four boss knobs flank you. This room would be harder if there wasn't heal squigs raining from the sky, but a final snazzy elevator up to the helm of the ship is your entrance to the second to last kill them all section. Use the helm to toss and turn the ship. While staying on the opposite side of wherever the other orcs are going, shoot them from far away to score some easy kills, and this section should be over before you know it. With a teleporta breaking down, and you falling into an orc trash dump, you eventually crawl out into an engine room, and shut down all the power on the gog hammer by pressing a big red button. With boss knobs everywhere, electric rays zapping you, and a few anti-gravity spots to mess with you, it's normal to take one or two deaths in this arena. Take notice of the boss knobs, stay away from electric rays, and keep track of your heal squig. You should be fine and able to deal with this one. But as your fighting rages, the grog hammer crashes into the planet of Luteus. Hey, remember this guy that showed up in one cutscene before this? I really wish we got to see more of this mean git through the story and had him play a more antagonistic role. Maybe with him taunting us on the Gog Hammer. Also, that stomp ahead is attached to a whole stomper now and has the intent of killing you with it. Man, they must have had George Lucas write the script for this game. Because the game ends where it started. Like poetry, it rhymes. The boss fight is a test of one's sanity. Orcs constantly spawning and the Stompa shooting and throwing giant missiles around to make it difficult that causes the player to piggyback off a of heel squigs the whole fight. Ironically, Ogrek's weak spot is himself in the Stompa's heart. Using the Beast Snaga Boy works well here with the spears being able to chunk both Ogrek and the Stompa with his spears. Three damage phases are needed to kill him with the Stompa flattening half of the geometry of the arena on the third phase, causing you to get swarmed easier. If you can make it past one more damage phase, you kill the Stompa and are given a proper right ending. Gargas takes his hair squig back and claims Ogrex Waw as his own, along with renaming it and himself Teeth Grabba, with being ready to launch another attack on the Hive City of Luteus. Shooter's Blood and Teeth is the orkiest game to come out yet. Simple, easy to pick up, fun to master, and to play through multiple times. It is reasonably short for its price, but has many achievements and things to search for. The game has some released issues with compatibility and crashes, but over my four playthroughs of the game, I have never experienced any of those issues, except for a semi-stuttering on the capture of the video. What did you think of the game? Is the game blessed by Gork and Mork themselves, or is it just a game for gits? I think it's a great callback to how games used to be released, as finished packages, and I'm a big fan of it. Like this video and want to see more about orcs? Take a look at this lore video I made on them. Happy October, fellas!